On this episode of China Uncensored, Shanghai's lockdown enters a new level of crazy. China continues to back Russia. Clapping is now a crime. And more on this week's China News Headlines. John and Censored, I'm Chris Chappell. Communism is a mental illness. You give up all your individual rights and freedoms to an authoritarian government in the name of equality. And guess what? The authoritarian government does not actually care about you. Look no further than the Shanghai COVID lockdown. Nothing says this lockdown is for your health like a guy in a hazmat suit with a gun. You see, the Chinese Communist Party demands a zero COVID policy. That's not possible at this point, but it doesn't matter. Policy is disconnected from reality. So many local officials who fear losing their jobs do insane things to appease the Communist Party. Things that usually aren't too nice for the people, like locking down in an entire city. And this is not about keeping people healthy. Look at this footage showing people crammed in a Shanghai quarantine center. How do the people of Shanghai deal with this insanity? Well, people are starting to rise up. Friend of the show, Laowai86, did a great video about that last week. Check it out. And others are using humor. Here's a Shanghai health official from March 2020 recommending that safety come before freedom. After that, control your soul's desire for freedom became something of a meme in China. And now, two years later, Shanghai is in a complete lockdown. So as Shanghai residents took to their balconies to sing and protest the lack of supplies, a drone showed up and said this. Maybe Chinese officials were trying to be lighthearted and funny, but it hits different when you're literally talking to people imprisoned in their own apartments. Please, control your soul's desire to open the window. Thank you for cooperating. And there are a couple more things the Chinese regime would like you to control your desire for as well, like your spouse. Here's an actual strategy being used in the name of zero COVID. Please, control your soul's desire for hugs or any type of human comfort. Thank you for cooperating. Although this is crazy, it's also not really surprising because control your soul's desire for freedom is kind of the trademark of communism. Meanwhile, my favorite Chinese state media, the Global Times, is now claiming COVID is spreading from clothing made in South Korea. I'm sure that's totally based on science and not an attempt to put economic pressure on South Korea following the election of their new president who ran on a tough on China platform. The Chinese Communist Party's zero COVID policy is doing way more than just making life miserable for the people of Shanghai. This will have serious consequences for us around the world. Shanghai has the world's largest container port. It has so far stayed in operation 24 hours a day inside a closed loop bubble, which requires workers to stay on site all the time. So don't worry the global supply chain hasn't been crippled yet thanks to the Communist Party's decision to essentially resort to forced labor. Marx would be so proud. But according to an expert who spoke to the South China Morning Post, even with the world's largest port open, the closure of many warehouses, the drop in manufacturing, and the serious disruption to trucking in, out, and within the city are expected to cause a significant drop in the availability of goods and port output. Meanwhile, Chinese state-run media are starting to run multiple articles about how there's totally no backlog at the Shanghai port. Everything is great. Which, of course, means that the congestion at the port is at an all-time high. Remember, you know it's true when the Chinese Communist Party denies it. 
Even though the zero COVID policy may sound crazy to you, it's actually America who has handled COVID badly. Here's Chinese state-run CCTV for more. 美国约翰斯霍普金斯大学发布的统计数据显示，截至北京时间今天十六点，美国累计确诊病例超过八千一百四十九万，死亡病例超过九十九点七一万例。美国四号报告的单日新增确诊病例达到一百三十四万九千例，报告单日新增死亡病例一万五千四百七十八例。Oh、my goodness, over a million confirmed cases in just a single day? That's insane. Why aren't we hearing about that in America? Well, because it's not true. Johns Hopkins University's COVID database had a glitch that accidentally counted all of Kentucky's cases for the entire pandemic as suddenly being from one day. The actual numbers for April 5th were just over 30,000 new cases and less than 500 deaths. Johnny Stateway Media made a mistake. Apparently, no one bothered to fact check that at state-run CCTV because it fit their pre-existing narrative that the U.S. is a COVID-filled wasteland. But lots of Chinese netizens started making fun of them, so CCTV begrudgingly admitted that Johns Hopkins made a mistake, but didn't admit they did as well. And after the break, the Chinese Communist Party still goes to bat for Russia. Welcome back. This week, the world was horrified by these satellite images, showing civilian bodies strewn on the street of the town of Bucha in Ukraine. After Russian forces were expelled from the city, bodies were found, tied up, shot, and left to rot. These are war crimes, which makes it pretty hard for China to continue to support Russia. Chinese state-run companies like Sinopec have already been forced to stop investment in Russia because of sanctions. But you know. Tying up and shooting civilians—that's kind of hard to defend. The Chinese Communist Party would know they've had a pretty long history of doing that. That's why China's foreign ministry has called for a probe, but assigned no blame. Assigned no blame. Civilians were executed. Figuring out who to blame isn't rocket science. But from their perspective, there can be two sides to every story. Russia says they totally didn't execute innocent civilians. That's why Chinese state-run media have been quick to emphasize the Russian rebuttal, with two prominent televised reports from national broadcasters CCTV this week highlighting unsubstantiated claims from Moscow that the situation was staged after Russian forces withdrew from the area, which satellite images show is not true. But while Chinese state-run media is spreading misinformation, one Chinese YouTuber has been telling the truth, and YouTube is punishing him for it. YouTube has suspended the account of a Chinese vlogger who talked about his life in Ukraine. We talked about the YouTuber Wang Jixian in this episode a couple of weeks ago. On his channel, Wang talked about his opposition to Russia's invasion, and for that he got death threats from Chinese nationalists and censorship from YouTube. YouTube told Wang that his account was suspended over a March 28th video that was flagged for violent content. Yes. Being in Ukraine and talking about a bloody invasion that's happening to you might involve some violence. In the case of the video that got his channel shut down, he was in his kitchen talking about the war, and the video included footage of the city with sounds of exploding missiles and air raid sirens going off. So thank you, YouTube, for protecting us from such violent content. And after the break, clapping is a crime, at least in Hong Kong. Welcome back. When it comes to the U.S. military defense, things aren't looking so good. At least according to Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff General Mark Milley. We are now facing two global powers, China and Russia, each with significant military capabilities, both who intend to fundamentally change the rules-based current global order. We are entering a world that is becoming more unstable. And the potential for significant international conflict between great powers is increasing, not decreasing. Meanwhile, a top U.S. admiral warned of China's breathtaking nuclear expansion. China is rapidly expanding its military capabilities. It has fully militarized artificial islands in the South China Sea, signed a security deal with the Solomon Islands that could put a Chinese military base on the doorstep of Australia and New Zealand. And of course, the Chinese Communist Party's navy is now the biggest in the world. But despite that, 
Biden's new military budget will actually shrink the U.S. Navy. Which is fine because the U.S. Navy is apparently less busy. In 2021, the Biden administration reduced the number of Freedom of Navigation patrols near China. But on the bright side, the U.S. has approved $95 million to boost Taiwan's air defense system. But I wouldn't want you to think the U.S. is the only country making boneheaded moves regarding China. The U.K. is being boneheaded, too. They've quietly approved the Chinese takeover of the U.K.'s largest microchip maker. These microchips, called semiconductors, are vital to a variety of electronic devices, including ones related to the military. Now, China is not very good at making them. According to the Brookings Institution, every year China imports more than $300 billion of semiconductors. The U.S. has sanctioned Chinese semiconductor makers. It's one of the few areas of manufacturing where the West still has a leg up on the Chinese Communist Party, and it's one reason why the CCP wants to take over Taiwan. Taiwan is the world's largest maker of semiconductors. But now, China can apparently take over a UK microchip factory and all their technology. I mean, what's next? Letting China build our nuclear reactors? Oh wait, yes, the UK is letting China do that too. So if you're American, you can feel good, because at least we're not as boneheaded as the UK. But you know who is actually doing something smart when it comes to China? Australia. Australia approved a $2.6 billion missile upgrade to counter China. The plan will significantly increase the range of missiles on Australia's warships and warplanes. Australia also expelled a Chinese millionaire from Australia over foreign interference. Among the many things he was accused of by Australia's spy agency, here's a crazy one. He offered 20,000 Australian dollars to the son of a Chinese activist who was living in Australia to pressure his father in China to be quiet. He told Australian authorities it was for charity. Right. Hong Kong authorities have reached a new low. As of this recording, six people have been arrested for clapping. You see, at the start of the year, there was a hearing for activist Chow Hong Tung. She made an impassioned speech in the courtroom supporting the victims of the 1989 Tiananmen Square massacre, and several people there clapped. Yep, that's what they got arrested for. Which is crazy, but that's not even the craziest part. They weren't charged for contempt of court, no. They were charged with sedition, which carries a two-year prison sentence. For clapping. Now that may sound like complete nonsense, but this is actually a brilliant move by the Chinese Communist Party. Hear me out. This week, Hong Kong Chief Executive Carrie Lam said she's not going to seek a second term. And since she's so widely hated, how do you think people are going to respond? with cheers and clapping. That's right, clapping. The Chinese Communist Party will finally achieve its ultimate goal of putting every single person in Hong Kong in prison. Yeah, that was dark. But in these dark times, we have to be able to look at things with a sense of humor. And no one knew that better than friend of the show David Kilgore. David Kilgore was the former Canadian Secretary of State for Asia and the Pacific a former parliament member, and a criminal prosecutor for almost 10 years. David passed away this week at the age of 81 from a rare lung disease. I got to know David when I hosted the Coalition Roundtable on organ harvesting in 2017. And I can honestly say David was one of the greatest men I've ever known. For decades, David devoted his life to exposing human rights atrocities, from the genocide in Darfur to the Chinese Communist Party killing prisoners of conscience, like Falun Gong and the Uyghurs, for their organs. And he did it with a smile. Here's a clip from our China Unscripted podcast with David. <laughs> How dare you laugh about this, David? Uh, <laughs> I no, mean, no, I actually, I think it's pretty amazing that you can keep your sense of humor after decades of doing this. Well, you, ha you honestly, you have to. And I'm, I'm Scottish origin, too. And we Scots have, you know, we have good sense of humor about things. We, we try to find humor even where there is none. And I'm sure that... Uh, I mean, you guys do eat haggis. Oh, of course we eat haggis. It's the best food in the world. Everybody you know, I've always wanted that, to don't... try it. Oh, no, it's delicious. Please do it on Robbie Burns Day whenever you can. It's, it's, it's delicious. And, and um, 
Um, a lot of people don't like it. I agree with you, but but it is it is quite good. And it's apparently very healthy too. <laughs> you know, in some ways, it's appropriate that we're talking about haggis on an organ harvesting episode. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, uh, yes, I agree. I, I was just thinking that, actually, but I didn't want to interrupt. <laughs> well, to anyone who's listening who's offended, as David said, when you, ha- you have to have a sense of humor about this. Thank you, David, and Godspeed. I'll have some haggis for you. And now it's time for me to answer a question from one of you. A fan who supports China Uncensored on either the crowdfunding website Patreon or on our exclusive social media community on Locals. Today's question comes from... Nick Allen on Locals. Are lockdowns an excuse to crack down on unrest? If all you need is a positive test to lock down a city, then you can just arrange a positive test in a city you want to lock down, and presto, lockdown city. You know, Nick, that makes a lot of sense. But the problem is, China's zero COVID policy doesn't make sense. It's completely illogical. Take the case of Shanghai. Locking down the entire city is going to make the 25 million residents there furious. And it could have a devastating effect on the Chinese economy and the global economy. Those are all things the CCP should desperately want to avoid. If there were a problem with dissent, the CCP has loads of ways to go after the dissenters. Doing something as destructive as locking down an entire city, it just doesn't make sense. Other than the fact that the CCP can't admit when it's wrong because communism is a mental illness. Thanks for your question and your support, Nick. We really can't make this show without your support. With frequent YouTube demonetization, we wouldn't be able to afford paying our staff, and we couldn't make episodes. All it takes is as little as a dollar per episode. If you like the show, please consider giving. Check out patreon.com slash chinauncensored or chinauncensored.locals.com for more. You'll get a bunch of cool perks and ensure that we can continue to stand up to the Chinese Communist Party. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time.